Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to run powerful large language models on your desktop or laptop. So first thing you have to do is to basically go to um, LM Studio. Um, and then you can basically find the right uh, executable for you know, your operating system that you have. And when you open up LM Studio, you can basically type in any model. So let me type in Llama 2 here. Um, and then as you can see, there are a lot of different kinds of models. Um, and so that's really cool. So uh, you'd probably want to choose you know, a smaller model, like a 7 billion parameter or 30, uh, 13 billion parameter model, uh, just depending on the hardware that you have. Um, the thing to keep in mind is that you know when you let's basically click on a model. So um, I've clicked on a certain model by the bloke who is uh, very popular on the Hugging Face repository for uploading various models of different sorts of quantization. So what's this quantization? First of all, you'll see that there are different numbers. There's Q2, Q4, Q5, etc. And the other thing that you would see is that as these numbers go up, the size of the models also goes up. So Q2 here is 5.54 GB, uh, and then Q8 is 13.85 GB. Um, and basically, this amounts to precision. So uh, Hugging Face has a very good introduction to um, the data types and precision. And as you can see here, this is basically a, an FP32, which has a precision of 23 bits. Uh, a range of 8 bits and 1 bit is the sign. Whereas an FP16 um, is basically you know, half the memory footprint of an FP32. So where does this come and where is this used in your machine learning models? Well, uh, remember that your model has you know, billions of parameters in the current scenario. So if you have 7 billion parameters, now each one of those parameters is basically uh, a floating point um, number. Um, and basically, if that, you know, if the number is uh, an FP16, that's, you know, half the memory uh, footprint as an uh, FP32. So um, in general, the way the scaling goes is that uh, an FP32 model would have memory equivalent of four times the number of uh, billion parameters um, in GB. So a 7 billion parameter model would have approximately a 28 GB memory footprint. The 16, um, uh, FP16 version of that model would have a footprint of 14, uh, gig 14 gigabytes uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and you know, when you're looking at an 8-bit quantized model, it's basically almost exactly the same. Um, so here you can see you know, this is a 13 billion parameter model, and the memory footprint here is 13.85 GB. Um, so which is one fourth what it would have been if you're looking at a standard FP32 model. So this looks like magic, right? Why don't we all just use quantization? Well, it turns out there are certain trade-offs. One of the trade-offs and the most important thing is potentially the reduction in quality of response. Um, and the only way to know that is to rigorously evaluate these models. And I think that's why it's really great that we have these desktop models that we can just run locally. Um, you know, this and this GGML is basically a C++ port of these LLM models. So all of our hardware, uh, all of the you know the apps, they basically run on uh, C++. C++ is like the, the foundation of uh, operating systems. So this works seamlessly. Uh, you can just download it, and it's you can use it in Mac, you can use it in Windows, uh, whichever. And this is really uh, a useful uh, little tool to have. So I'm going to go here in this chat here, and I'm going to basically use a, a model that I have downloaded before, which is this a 7 billion uh, Q4 GGML model. So I'm going to ask basically a question like, uh, hello, how are you? And as you can see, this is the response. I'm doing really well today. I just got back from a long walk with friends and some delicious food. Now I'm feeling energized and ready to do whatever comes next. Um, and it's a little bit long-winded, so that might be 
uh, because of the way this has been fine-tuned. I'm not exactly sure what this is. Uh, it could also be something about the quantization. Um, okay, and there's a lot of different parameters here. Uh, the important one here is uh, the model configuration. Um, and I want to go into the, the hardware settings, which is important. So yeah, you can see it generate, it's detected my NVIDIA CUDA GPU. Uh, and I've chosen the number of GPU layers as 15. As you can see, you know, start small, somewhere between 10 to 20. Uh, I found that this doesn't work for above 20 in my laptop. So uh, you can play around with this. Um, the other important thing is to keep the entire model in RAM. Uh, because if you don't, then uh, this leads to lower memory optimization. So you'll be storing more of the model on the hard disk. Um, and so this would be uh, slower, right? Um, and then you can also play around with things like the prompt. Uh, if the model has been you know, fine-tuned on things like on, on the prompts, you can do the randomness, words to generate, uh, repeat penalty, all that good stuff. So this is uh, really awesome. So you know the, they made it so easy by just putting all of this in this corner here. And I must say, I really like this UI. It's really sleek. You know, I've looked at a few other models like GPT for all, local AI. Uh, they're all nice, but this is by far uh, the sleekest UI. Just look at this. You can see the speed um, of token generation. So it's four tokens a second. So roughly a word a second. You can see the time to the first token. You know, all of these parameters. It's just beautiful. Um, the other thing that I find really awesome is this local inference server. So here you can just start a server um, and you can basically use OpenAI API as a wrapper. So you can make calls as if this was a model in ChatGPT. Just replace that ChatGPT URL with this. You don't have to uh, pay any money to OpenAI because you're not using their model, right? Uh, and then I'm just going to go to a notebook here. Uh, I'm going to run this. Uh, prompt, can you give me the Python code to import a CSV file? Pretty standard. Okay, so see, it's given the code. So import CSV, blah, blah, blah. Uh, some commentation here. Um, this code will read the contents of example of CSV. And then this code will uh, create a new CSV file called um, example.csv. Um, All right, so great. OK, and the other thing to keep in mind is the way you're calling it. So you would replace the base URL with this uh, local server's URL. You would keep uh, a blank key, a uh, blank API key, just because you're not, like I said, you're not actually making calls to the OpenAI server. I know this is pretty cool, but it might take some getting used to, but it it works nicely. Um, and then here, lastly, is basically where you can see all of your various downloaded models. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video introducing you to LM Studio. I think that there are multiple uses for something like this where you can play around with large language models um, locally. First of all, you can download um, any GGML model uh, within a reasonable size range that fits into your uh, CPU and, and GPU memory. And you can start playing around with it and playing around with quantizations, um, as well as starting to evaluate the quality of responses from these models. Now, the latency will not be terribly good. So, of course, you can't really use these sort of uh, desktop apps on your local laptop or desktop uh, and expect that to do well in production because uh, I feel that the latency will just not be good. It'll be just uh, too slow, right? But you can start to generate a lot of different responses for a lot of different models and start to thoroughly investigate how well they do in various conditions. And then that can help you filter out what model that you ultimately want to use and invest your resources in, let's say, deploying it uh, into the cloud or into uh, more powerful machines. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. Feel free to subscribe, and I will see you very soon on Data Science in Everyday Life. Bye.